All right, let's talk about, in my mind, the most disappointing team in all of baseball last year, and I think it's Detroit Tigers. Now, I think that they had the most hype that was not answered in all of baseball last year. I mean, there was so much hype. This team was, are they going to be a playoff team? Are they? Could they Could they make a push with what they added with Jose Baez? Uh, and, and there was just a lot of things that I think people were excited about with Detroit. There was just a lot of hype beside Detroit. I don't know if you felt that way. I definitely felt that at the beginning of last season. AJ Hinch, um, he, he couldn't get this squad in the right direction. There's a lot of things that just didn't go right with the Austin Meadows trade. You thought that was going to be a good addition for Detroit. Wound up being an absolute nightmare. We saw Austin Meadows and AL East doing great things in Tampa Bay. Uh, it just turned out to be a nightmare. Uh, obviously, he was going through some stuff, but uh, regardless, on the field, was not doing well. Uh, they did add Matt Boyd and Michael Lorenzen to the rotation. Michael Lorenzen had some, I think, he had some good moments with with the Angels. I would say, and uh, I, I think that that could be a good pickup. Matt Boyd, I think, also could be a a good thing as well. Uh, and then they had a crazy trade just recently, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. But initially, what's your thoughts about Detroit? Uh, do you do you agree with me? Do you think they were the most disappointing team last year? Are you with me on board with that? And then what do you think about AJ Hinch and this squad? Do you think they can get back to just being uh, a competitive team that we've seen in years past with Detroit? Um, so I, I never believed the hype okay. about Detroit. So I'm not all that disappointed. I think it went exactly how I figured it would go. Uh, I didn't I didn't buy into Javier Baez is unfortunately he's exciting. He has brilliant moments where you're like, man, that guy, he's something special. And then, but overall, he's he's not. You know, he's. I think he's kind of fits that kind of hype uh, description uh, rather well, actually. So, um, I'm not. I wasn't disappointed in them, um, but I certainly see why people have been, and I see why you say that. Uh, as far as uh, can they turn it around? I, I hope you're not asking about 2023. Uh, because that's a, like, no, no. Uh, when Matt Boyd and Lorenzen are your, your, <laughs> your, your big additions and then you trade your closer for whatever the hell that return is, um, you're, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> you're asking for trouble. Uh, you might as well just put up a sign, a for sale sign on every, on the back of everybody's Jersey and, and hope for the best, right? Like, um, yeah, it, it's unfortunate. Um, I'm actually surprised it took them as long as it did to trade Gregory Soto. Um, but one thing I will highlight is that, you know, Matt Boyd and, and, and Lorenzo, they join a, a mediocre rotation that, so, you know, there's that. Uh, but what I found interesting in preparing, uh, you know, the notes and all that stuff is, uh, Erod, um, he can opt out after this coming season, interesting. right? So... That puts a little bit of an interesting spin on him in particular, right? So he needs a good season to, uh, so that because I would imagine you cannot, <laughs> I, I, I will not believe, I refuse to accept that he will not opt out. Why would you on purpose choose to play in Detroit in 2024? If you had a bad you know what year, I mean? that's it. Just right. if you if you were if you were nervous that you couldn't get a free agent deal anywhere else, you'd stay. And that's the only thing. Yeah, I'm with you completely. Especially yeah. what we see with this team. One hundred percent. Yeah, he's opting out. He's gone. So um that's the one thing I'll be paying attention to is what kind of year he has. Uh, because it could net the Tigers a nice return at the trade deadline. Um, because he's not coming back, you know, and they're not gonna offer him a qualifying offer. So <laughs> might as well give him everything he can, give him all the technology, anything so that he has a good season, you know, <laughs> bubble wrap him, feed him his spinach every morning. Um, and that's the only thing that's really going to help this team moving forward. In fact, it's going to help him the team more than him playing out the, his contract. To yeah, be honest, I agree so yeah, they got to hire yeah. the property brothers, get them on the scouting department or the trade department so they can flip this guy. That really yeah. needs to happen. Uh, talk about this trade. Soto goes to the Phillies. Uh, it was an interesting trade at first. I'm not gonna lie, right at the beginning when this trade occurred, before I really dug deep in this one, I sent a message over to you and I was curious if this was going to be our first ever WTF award here on the show. Gregory Soto, Cody Clemens heading over to Philly for Nick Maton, Matt Veerling, and Donnie Sands. Now, when I look at this a little farther, I, at first I was like, what is Detroit doing? 
what what I mean, what was what are they doing getting rid of Soto? Obviously, he's a very he's a very interesting player, if you will. Uh, and he's got you know I don't know if you want to say baggage, but there's there's some there's some stuff there. And uh, and Soto, you know, he's a great player on the field. He's got his ups and downs, but we we have seen some good things from him. However, they did get three, I would say, quality bats for a reliever that does have some ups and downs. And when I say quality, I mean they have potential. I would say two of those have potential to make an impact right off the bat on this Detroit team. That's not really saying much about this Detroit team, but they mm-hmm. have an opportunity to make value right off the bat. I really like the addition of Matt Veerling. I think Matt Veerling is a perfect Detroit Tiger player when I look into this, this team. And the reason I say that is only because he's super fast. He's yeah. super fast, and that's great for Comerica Park. Mm-hmm. And when you look at his, his stats, he doesn't have the best barrel rate, but he's got a very good expected batting average. If he finds a way to make that more of a line drive-ish, get it over the second baseline with the speed, you're talking doubles, extra baits, hits all the time. So he has the potential to be a perfect mm-hmm. Detroit Tiger player in that home in that home stadium. Uh, so I think he's going to be my favorite player looking at that trade. I'm going to pay attention to him a lot. I think he will have the opportunity to do it. He's very versatile as well. He has a lot of major league experience at almost every position with the exception of, uh, you know, shortstop and catcher. So uh, really good things as well from him, but Gregory Soto moving on from, from Detroit to the Phillies, it's going to look a lot different from their bullpen. And we already talked about them having a disappointing rotation, if you already have a disappointing rotation, you need to rely on your bullpen a little more to get you through games. Well, getting rid of Soto does not help that narrative, Sean. I mean, yes and no. I think in all honesty, they could trade Gregory Soto and, and have a better bullpen. You know, because I think what happens with closers and, and, you know, anybody who has been following me since I've been doing this, I have a thing about the the save stat. Uh, I think it's way overrated and overvalued. Um, and and the, he might be the perfect example of that. You know, he's got 30 saves last season. So automatically you're like, wow, that's great. That's great. You know, he can help the Phillies. Wonderful. Okay. The problem with it is that his strikeout rate was 22.8 and his walk rate was 12.9, 13% of the batters. Um, and what, what, uh, another aspect of that, his home run to fly ball rate, was he he through his career it's ranged between 12 and 14 percent right so average for for context is 10 percent so he's always been above average in a way you don't want to be above average um in that giving up fly balls and then having them turn into home runs but he managed to what is is the only thing that i would point to as maybe some sign of positivity is the that he managed to drop that all the way down to 3.4 uh in 2022 so maybe he's figured something out um in that regard uh but i think the the issue for me is that walk rate is obscene for a guy that is expected to pitch high leverage innings um if that's the plan in philly and maybe it isn't but for me um uh, you know is it that big a loss really for detroit they've got joe jimenez who who i actually prefer as a pitcher you know what i mean and so uh, i don't know does it make them better worse i I don't i don't know that it makes them as worse as people may think it does Interesting. I like that take. That's a really interesting take on that one. I'm a. I still think Soto is a good enough goal piece that if you lose him, uh, you're hurting your you're hurting yourself. But if they can find a way to up it, uh, the Joe Jimenez uh, addition this week this year in the trade also does help that. Uh, but we'll see what happens when the season goes. But the Detroit Tigers, there's a lot of question marks, just like the White Sox. I think they're just a little more solidified that they're just going to be not as good as we expected, and they have a lot of things to work on. Uh, and that's unfortunate because this is, and it has been reported, the last season for Miguel Cabrera. He said this will be his last year. Hopefully he's healthy for that one as he rides into the sunset. I think it's really cool, as he said, he wants to stay in baseball to help younger players, so I'm sure he'll take some kind of spot in the Detroit organization. I'm sure they'll take him with open arms. Why wouldn't you take a legend? like that what is your thoughts as we close up Detroit Tigers uh what would you love to see from Miguel Cabrera as he finishes his uh his his beautiful career with Detroit Tigers and MLB yeah how can you not say an Albert Pujols-esque 
uh, departure, right? I would love to see Miggy just go off and destroy everything and everyone and stay healthy. Like, that's the first thing, right? You want to see him be able to play a full season and be productive um, and just absolutely go off in, in a way that um, leaves his mark. Because I think what's the, what is unfortunate is that you're right. He's such a legend and has done so much in the game of baseball and made it look easy, I'll be honest. Uh, and so I want to see him finish strong uh, and get the recognition that he deserves as opposed to kind of just fading off uh, into the background. I, w- I don't want to see that for, for somebody of his stature. 100% couldn't agree with you more. One last thing, got to put it out there. As I'm wearing the Torque Bomb shirt, I hope we get a resurrection of Spencer Torkelson and he comes back and bees that form that we hope he all could yeah. be. I really want that to happen. Detroit Tigers, 66 and 96 last year. They were just one game in front of Kansas City. They finished four from the AL Central. 66 wins in 2023, over or under? <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm actually going to take the under. I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. I think this is. I think this is the going to be the worst team in the American League this year, um, and we haven't got to the AL West yet. But I think this is going to be the worst team in the American League. Uh, it's period. Uh, I think we're talking 100 losses, unfortunately, for the Detroit mm-hmm. Tigers. All right, let's put it all together. I already see we're over time here. Thank you so much for sticking with us here. As I see, we still have some some watchers in. We're going to finish this off here, Sean. Here we go. One through five. Once the season ends, your predictions for the AL Central. All right. Here we go. Uh, I'll start at the bottom with the Tigers. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, yeah, yeah. wow. Um, And then in fourth place, the Kansas City Royals. In third place, the Chicago White Sox. And and, and third, I think, is perfect because it could go either way. They're right in the middle, and it could go either way, and I wouldn't be shocked if uh, if it did. Uh, And now this is where it gets really interesting. But I feel like the Twins are going to be in second in that division, and the Guardians are the team to beat. Uh, However, Minnesota is a very scary team if everything goes well for them. I just don't see it happening, that's all. Yeah, you know what? I think we finally agree fully on a one three five on this one. I'm with you. I think Cleveland is number one, Minnesota is number two. I'm with you. I think it's a lot closer than what we saw last year in this division uh, with the obviously Cleveland winning 92 games and Chicago winning 81. I think it's a lot closer. I think we have two teams that uh, the winner will be in the 93, 94 range. I think we have a second place at 89, 88 or something like that. It'll be a lot closer. Uh, Third place, I did give it to the White Sox. However, I think it's a lot closer with Kansas City. I think we see a big step Mm -hmm. up with Kansas City this year. Not super big. They had 65 wins last year. I think we can see them getting towards the 74-75 mark, and that's kind of where I see Chicago right now. So I give the lead Mm. to Chicago because, again, a lot of questions, a lot of concerns, but I think Kansas City could sneak up to them. And then we're going to take a mile down the road, maybe take a jump down to a hole, and then we see the Detroit Tigers. I do see them as a 100-loss team this year, unfortunately. I just think that's happening. I hate to say it because they just have so many – Good young players and Miguel Cabrera on his last year. I mean, I'd mm. love to see that that St. Louis kind of run and him sneak in the playoffs. I just don't see it happening. Uh, no. If they can find a way to stay at 99 losses, then I think that's a successful season for them. But unfortunately, I got them in last place for this 